Inside, Jimmy Lau, the managing director of the air show and chief details man, is checking arrangements for his most important guest on opening day, the Prime Minister. So is this the metal I specified? Yes. 316. On the exhibition floor, a gremlin has come to light. Or rather, it hasn't. As director of operations Qua found half of one of the halls plunged into darkness. All the entire uh, zone where the MTU stand is near roller shutter to uh, absolutely no hall lighting. Can you rectify that immediately, over? This could be a major problem. No lights, no power for the displays, over a quarter of the exhibition area. It turns out the machine needs to be completely reset, which only the contractor is allowed to do, which means a wait in darkness. Not ideal for the exhibitors. Everybody's panicking right now because we are rushing to complete no, no, all the Soon the expert arrives and works his magic with a ballpoint pen. The final day before the show opens, and the exhibitors are all flat out finishing off their stands. Some of the workers are feeling the strain. The theme seems to be shiny walls, even if they're just colored plastic stuck on a wooden frame. But this is the backdrop against which business can be done. A final polish with a rag gives it all that corporate sheen. The aircraft display area has been filling up outside. In town, there is a reception for the gathering delegates under Singapore's newest attraction, which is, for this year only, the highest freestanding big wheel in the world. With military from across Asia, the Pacific, and as far afield as the Middle East, the Singaporean military officers can begin their diplomatic work. <laughs> And for all the delegates, there's a free trip around the wheel, giving a bird's eye view of the city state. And so, without much fanfare, the brand new Singapore Air Show opens. Limos deliver ministers and ambassadors to their special entrance. But a lack of door openers leaves Jimmy ushering in the guests himself. The security details stiffen. The Prime Minister is arriving. Jimmy makes the mistake of opening a door and is overlooked as the PM greets his ministers. A little later, and proper protocol has been restored. Jimmy is at the PM side. The visiting military show a professional interest in the display. Though for them, the aerobatic teams are just entertainment. What really interests them as buyers are the capabilities of the aircraft on show. The countries of Southeast Asia don't necessarily have the biggest purses in the world, so they're looking for both quality and a good price. First up, the F-A-18 Super Hornet, showpiece of the U.S. Navy. The plane flown by the Blue Angels. It's sold on the basis of being highly versatile and highly maneuverable and each comes with a price tag of 100 million U.S. dollars. Then there's the Italian jet, the Alenia Aermacchi M346. 
It's not a combat aircraft, but a light two-seater training plane, which will set you back something like 14 million euros. The Koreans have a riposte, the T-50, a trainer that can double up as a light combat plane. Each can cost upwards of 20 million U.S. dollars. More if it's combat ready. Plenty to think about if you've money burning a hole in your sharply pressed uniform pocket. The display over, the hall fills out. It's a field day for military big spenders and possibly the most colorful day that the air show has to offer. While all the business is going on around, Kwa is on patrol. He's found some untidiness and he's going to sort it out personally. Amongst the aircraft displays are the weapons manufacturers. With the U.S. currently involved in two major conflicts, much of the weaponry that has been tested in the heat of battle has been produced by American manufacturers and appeared on the news. Like it or not, it's a selling point. And the video displays don't hesitate to show just what these contraptions are capable of. Destructive power is big business, and this sales pitch is for smart and clean weaponry. A 300,000 US dollar cross between a guided smart weapon and a cluster bomb. Its selling point is straightforward. A single-minded goal to blow up everything across a huge target area. Of course, no one will tell you who's buying what, but there's no doubt this is what the military top brass have come here for. By day two, the uniforms have dissipated. Time for the civil air companies to start vying for Asia's newly flowing business cash. Vinit Patak is starting up a flying taxi service for the new generation of India's executives. And so he needs planes, 20 of them, around 60 million US dollars worth. So for the businessman in a hurry, access to private jets without all that tedious fiddling around with scheduled airlines is seen as tremendously useful. These are not really a luxury anymore. What you're looking at here now is a business tool they move people around. It's a freedom machine, if you want to use it that way, because it gets you point A to point B in the quickest possible way. So Vinit's being courted assiduously by rival companies. Canadian Bombardier, owner of such brands as Learjet, gives him a tour of one of their planes. It's an ultra-long-haul jet, which only needs a maximum of one stop to take you and up to 18 of your friends from one point in the world to any other. Though how much economic sense it makes is a question, as the plane alone costs the equivalent of 10,000 first-class tickets between London and Sydney. Brazilian upstart rival Embraer is happy to show off its legacy. It's rather more modest in its ambitions, with a range of just over 6,000 kilometers for a similar number of passengers but it comes at just over half the cost of the Bombardier. Vinnett's needs are comparatively modest.